Hey guys, so I shared over social media over the weekend that I made this inspiration album little book. Um, I used chipboard for the covers and I covered them in pieces of scrap painty paper, you know, like wipe up paper and um, inside and outside. And then I made some pockets um, to fit some 5 by 7 inspiration photos out of old sheet protectors, binder sheet protectors. And I got asked how I did this. I did reference um, a couple of videos or artists um, on YouTube. Linda Lopatka showed how to do this and um, then later on I saw another video that was posted after Linda's by the Frugal Crafter and um, she had a few variations so and I, I've gotten asked about this a lot so I'm gonna show you how I did it basically but I would recommend that you go watch one or both of their videos um, it's a just brilliant idea um, you just need some um, regular standard office supply sheet protectors you need one of these wood burning tools um, I have one I don't use it that much and it, they usually come with a number of different tips and I usually use um, this is by Walnut Hollow I usually use um, this tip which is a flat round tip um, and I use it to transfer um, embroidery designs to cotton fabric um, before I embroider them and that's actually what I use it for sometimes I will hand cut a stencil with the exacto knife attachment um, but otherwise I wasn't really using it for anything else. I didn't know you could do it with this with it. I guess there is a tool that's being marketed out there right now for um, like melting and sealing plastic and making custom pockets, but if you have one of these, you could do it with these. Now, I had to remake today some of the color keys for some of my watercolors. Um, I have a couple of the Schmink Metal palettes. They look like this. And I keep changing around what's in them and moving the colors around. And then if I've laminated it, permanently laminated it, then, you know, I have to make a whole new card. So I thought, instead of permanently laminating it, why don't I make a, sh a pocket for it out of some of these sheet protectors. And then when I'm painting, I can just wipe it off and I don't have to worry about this getting wet. Um, which would be why you laminate the color keys so it doesn't get wet and, you know, get smeary and gross. and Yeah. So... I'm going to stick this in here, and I might be able to get two out of this, let's see. Oh yeah, I can, definitely. Okay, and then you need a metal ruler, and I, ha I have this all on a glass um, cutting board, um, which you definitely need. Um, because you want to um, protect, this is, gets really hot. You be very careful, don't burn yourself, um, don't touch the metal tip once you've turned it on. Um, use a glass cutting mat, don't leave it plugged in and turn on and walk away from it. Um, it's a fire hazard and uh, yeah, don't do that. Don't answer the phone, none of that stuff. Okay, I need my reading glasses because I need to see what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to line up the ruler with a straight edge here of this color key. This is the one for the... I have one of them that has just miscellaneous different brands of paint and different colors. Um, and these are some of my travel palettes. So I'm going to have it like, it's about an eighth or a sixteenth of, inch, sixteenth of an inch away from the edge. And I'm going to take my hot tool and I'm going to kind of slowly run it down along the edge of the metal ruler. Now if you just want to seal it, you don't want to do it too many times and you don't want to go too slow, but if you want to seal it and rip it off, which I do want to do, again I recommend watching Lindsay the Frugal Crafters video or Linda Lopatka's video, but if you do it right, it'll seal it and tear it off all in one go. I'm going to do this other one too. 
turn it around. And I have tons of these sheet protectors from my days as a an American Greetings installation coordinator. I had everything in binders and in sheet protectors and I still have tons of post-it notes from then too. <laughs> okay. And then I want to do it over here because I want to take these holes off. I don't need these holes on here. Now when I did the ones for the um, inspiration album, I left this um, end part with the holes on. And then I used my bind it all to punch holes in it and bind everything together. The part right there does not want to melt. It doesn't give off any odor. It doesn't, um, it's not making me wheeze or any of those things. You would think because it's melted plastic it would be a problem, but it's not. And I'm and I'm kind of um, icky today too. want to get a nice straight edge then you really do need a metal ruler and don't use a wooden one you'll set it on fire so you want a metal one there we go I'm going to trim this up straight and now I've got a protected color key that's inside a custom made pocket and I can if I need to because there's empty spaces in the palette I can pull this out and I can change the uh, add colors to it I could change these up and I could make a whole new card if I needed to and just reuse it in this in this pocket I love that so there's tons of possibilities with this. Once I saw the video and I realized there's tons of possibilities you can do. Um, I did take some of the scraps um, from making the little album, some of the pieces like this, and I made little pockets that I sealed sequin inside of. And those are going to be for Happy Mail or I've been throwing them into some of the um, Etsy purchases online when people buy things from me in my Etsy shop. Um, so if you get one of these, now you know why. why. Um, but these were really easy to make too. I just did the same thing and then I put the sequin in and then I just sealed the last end instead of cutting it and leaving it open. And there, you know, it's all sealed. You could do a shaker card. Would be cool. You could fill the little pocket with, say if you're on vacation and you go to the beach, put a little piece, bring home a little sandwich bag full of sand and little mini seashells and you could make a little custom pocket, put them inside, seal it shut and attach it to your art journal page. There's a million possibilities for this. So go watch Linda's video and the Frugal Crafters. I'll try to link them both in the video below. But that's how I did this and then I just used it my, my bind it all to um, you know hook everything together once I had the covers made and the pages made. Um, you can use whatever kind of binding system that you happen to have. If you don't have one, you could just put holes in it and use um, split rings or binder rings or you could stitch it shut. Whatever, you know, whatever works for you. All right, that's it right now, everybody. Go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it, and I'll see you later.